Hey, Orga here, back to back with another mystery for you today. Question yourself, or you're feeling very tired these days. Then you might want to watch this whole video, because I can tell you that medical science has come a long way in the last hundred years. But that doesn't mean every medical mystery has been solved. The case of the mysterious sleeping sickness that struck the world in the 1920s still remains unsolved to this day. The forgotten sickness epidemic transformed victims into living statues, speechless and motionless, and scientists still don't understand it. There is however a movie called Awakenings from the 1990s with Robert De Niro where his character Leonard Loeb is suffering from this very mysterious disease. Might be worth a watch if you find this video fascinating, but for now Let's get into the video, enjoy! Just after the end of World War I, a bizarre disease known as the sleepy sickness devastated millions of people across the world and left doctors puzzled for decades afterward. According to some sources, around 1 million of those affected by this disturbing illness died, while many others were transformed into living statues and spent the rest of their lives trapped inside their bodies and locked in institutions, speechless and motionless. Some of the finest scientific minds of the past 100 years have tried to provide the answer to what exactly caused the horrifying disease or how to treat it. But to date, nothing has been definitely proven and the sleepy virus remains one of the biggest medical mysteries of history. The brain illness spread around the globe at the same time as the Spanish flu pandemic that killed over 50 million people, which explains why the sleeping sickness epidemic has been largely overlooked by history, despite the fact that it left about 1 million people dead and deeply affected the lives of millions more. Although most cases were reported months after World War I ended, it is believed that the epidemic began in 1915 or 1916, when soldiers who displayed incredible lethargy and confusion were examined by doctors in Paris. At first, they assumed that the main cause of these rather unusual symptoms was mustard gas, which has been used during the war, but their assumption proved to be wrong. From its first reported case in 1915, the sleepy sickness is in medical terms called Encephalitis lethargica, estimated to have infected half a million people in Europe alone. Those who survived often had crippling side effects, with some remaining borderline catatonic for the rest of their lives. During the 1920s and 30s, the sleeping sickness perplexed doctors around the world. It was never solved, but it has drawn the attention of scientists for years and still do today. Americans fell victim to an epidemic of encephalitis lethargica, or sleepy sickness. The disease, which killed millions at the time, causes lesions in the brain. Those who survived sank into a kind of semi-conscious purgatory that imprisoned them for decades. In 1917, as World War I brought mass destruction like the world had never seen, two epidemics began tearing through the shell-shocked world. The first which would become known as the Spanish Flu of 1918, remains one of the worst pandemics in human history, wiping out an estimated 50 million people and affecting up to half a billion. While this crisis, understandably, took precedence, it was accompanied by a lesser known but far more perplexing virus, the sleeping sickness. The sleeping sickness is believed to have originated in Romania in 1915, but World War I disguised its true impact in Europe. It became more noticeable in New York, and doctors across Europe scrambled to identify the disease. There was plenty of confusion, but no clear answers. Due to the varied presentations of the disease, the overwhelming demands of World War I, and the appearance of other epidemics around the same time, many doctors treated individual cases of the sleeping sickness without realizing they were dealing with a whole new illness. It took the work of an Austrian neurologist named Konstantin von Economo to fully isolate and categorize the disease. Economo gave the disease a name based on what he determined to be its principal manifestations. 
lethargy and catatonia. Some of the afflicted reported feeling no discomfort in their sleep. The sleeping sickness prompted, amongst other things, an examination of the nature of sleep and the difference between sleep and catatonia. However, there was a wide array of experiences reported, some of which were quite pleasant. Take this account, written by Eleanor Carey, who suffered from the illness in 1923. Quote, After two months of illness, I was in little pain. In fact, it was so heavenly just to be allowed to sleep, but these people around me seemed to determine to prevent my being comfortable. When the idea finally crept through my sleeping brain that I must waken, it seemed to be a physical impossibility. I wanted to be obliging, but I just could not." End quote. Other victims reported dreams and vivid hallucinations. Often it was possible to wake the patient, but only for a few moments before they succumbed to sleep again. Some victims perished within days, while others slowly recovered. One case study details a woman suffered the sleeping sickness in 1917. She came to the clinic exhausted and then slid further into a somnolence. These symptoms were accompanied by a fever and the paralysis of her right arm. This woman seemed lucky as her condition slowly improved and two months later she was discharged from the hospital with no signs of fever or paralysis. Unfortunately, she passed away one month afterwards due to pneumonia. Many who recovered developed disabilities later in life. During its acute phase, the disease caused somnolence, lethargy, paralysis, fever, and sometimes ended the patient altogether. Some patients, however, made a full recovery often without any treatment. While this must have come as a relief, the disease was not quite finished with them. After recovery, many of the patients developed some form of Parkinson disease, a progressive nervous disorder that often causes the loss of various forms of muscular control. Parkinson's can include a wide variety of symptoms, and one of the most extreme forms was often seen in survivors of the sleeping sickness, akinesia. Essentially, this means total body paralysis. Some of these patients remained in a paralytic coma for many years. Some survivors remained in a sleep-like state for years. At various points during a case of encephalitis lethargica, it is possible for the patient to fall into a deep, akinetic coma. Chiefly, this was experienced by people who thought they had completely survived the disease only to develop a worsening case of Parkinson's years later that culminated in the coma. Because the cause of the disease was unknown, these comas were thought to be irreversible and those who suffered them were largely forgotten, as long-term coma patients often are. However, when Oliver Sacks began treating them with L-DOPA, some of them were able to interact with the world for the first time in 40 or more years. With the first medication, what was the first new sensation you felt? He moved, he moved, he moved, he moved. You could move. <laughs> With a miracle, yes? Yeah? yeah. In an inexplicable quirk of the brain, L-Dopa causes Lillian to speak in repetitions like a slightly scratched record. Some of the patients decided it was better to have dignity in purgatory than life without any pride. Leonard asked to be taken off the medication. Within hours, he returned to his frozen state, bright eyes inside a concrete body. And in the end, Rose, the reawakened flapper, couldn't accept the 64-year-old body trying to dance to those girlhood memories. She said she didn't like our television age, as she called it. And after 10 days of the sort of strange 1926-ish animation, she rather suddenly went back to this trance-like state and nothing we could do after that sort of had any effect on her. Oliver Sacks and his patients have reminded the world of a devastating story. Starting around 1917, the sleepy sickness epidemic crisscrossed the world, leaving almost five million people dead in its wake. In 1927, it essentially disappeared, although many institutions had to be built just to house all the living victims who were left permanently damaged. 
The movie Awakenings, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, showed what happened to those who temporarily recovered from this sickness. Nobody really knows what caused it. Despite Oliver Sacks' groundbreaking work with the treatment L-Dopa, there remains no complete cure for the sleepy sickness, as the medication often only provides temporarily relief. It is perhaps unsurprising that there is no cure, because scientists don't really understand what causes the sleepy sickness in the first place. During the outbreak, there were many different theories as to the cause. When the disease first appeared in England, doctors believed that it was a form of botulism. However, botulism is the result of detectable bacteria, and the bacteria simply was not present. Many other theories were proposed regarding the mystifying disease. At the end of the day, the truth is simply unknown. Papers are still written advancing various theories, but none have been proven or widely accepted. And cases continue to pop up still today. Because of the mysteries surrounding the illness, it is difficult to truly define when it began. But research still continues, and for now, the sleepy sickness remains one of the biggest medical mysteries of all time. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know why you are so tired all the time. <laughs> but go on now and watch the movie Awakening tonight. Or maybe watch some of my other videos for some more mysteries. And if you aren't too tired, please lift some of your fingers and leave a comment. Or else you got a 78% chance of being struck with bad luck within a week. I'm not kidding. This video is cursed. Until next time, stay safe, stay alive, bye 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 bye.